transits of Mercury and transits of Venus. It turns out that back, uh, back in 2012, okay. there was a transit of Venus, and we have an image from the transit of Venus here. This is actually an image taken by the team from the Space Science Center. Oh, right. From right, a place called the Gobi Desert. Oh, oh, just, uh, is that in Alabama? It's actually in Lower Mongolia. But okay, there we just, go. You, you <laughs> go to Al- just a little bit. Oh, you go to Alabama, you take a left, you know, and you, and you travel for a really long ways to the other side of the earth. And then... Okay, thank you. <laughs> you drop down from China a little ways. And yeah, there you go. You find yourself in a very dry place. Thank That's you the for Gobi orienting Desert. me now. That's I what... think I know. <laughs> All right, that sounded like a great trip, though, yeah. especially for students to t- take out to that. Oh, that's got to be fantastic. It's a really, it was a really neat expedition. And, and again, the, the whole purpose of this was not so much to do science, but just to share the event with, uh, with the public. Our team at Space Science Center actually collaborated with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration to be able to show the world this event. So we were taking these pictures from Gobi and we were webcasting them as part of NASA's overall education uh, effort to just let people around the world share in this event. Sure. We, we had 1.4 million people log on to our web servers oh, that that's, day. That's good. And watch that, that event really with us. Good. So that was really cool. Yeah, well, this is a wonderful picture. Tell us a little bit about this. And, and uh, did it go across? I, I, I'm also wondering now. They're not. These plants are not going to go in a particularly um, uh, horizontal right. track. They're that's going right. to be on their own orbit around the sun anyway, and that's what we're going to see. Yep, that's exactly right. So when the when the Venus transit happened, relative to the way the image is aligned here, you can see that black dot, which is over on the left hand side. Sure, that's Venus. That's Venus being closer than the sun by quite a lot, right? So it looks looks fairly large relative to the sun, but really, if Venus was at the distance of the sun, it would shrink down to a little tiny dot. Okay, yeah, because so, I was thinking that sun still is big, though. That's very sun, big. Sun's a lot bigger, but, but, but relative to the distance, it would be even bigger than Venus if Venus was at that same distance. Right. So the direction it traveled, though, during this transit would have been vertically kind of up and down. So wow. as you're looking okay. at this image, imagine, you know, this is Venus about halfway through the transit. It would have started at the upper left and gone through the sun down to the lower left. Okay. Right? So it's almost okay. on a vertical line as it traveled across this particular image right Wow, that, that's, uh, I don't understand that exactly. Well, um, par- part of that's just the way our cameras were aligned. But, but really, it's, it's all, all the planets are moving around the sun in, a, in the same plane and in the same direction. And so Venus is doing that same thing, but just relative to the way we had our cameras aligned, because remember the sun also rises and then as the sun goes across the sky, it kind of tips over like this. So it depends on what time of day you're observing. Uh It depends on how your telescopes are set up, whether they track that change in orientation or not. And, And then it, it depends on whether you know Venus was going to go across the just the edge of the sun or the middle of the sun, and all of that's the geometry of the orbits that so are taking all place. All that geometry plays a part right, in it. Well, now right. take a look at this. this: is the picture, another picture you brought, and that kind of tells us from where it was to where it is at this moment. Exactly, you can see it's moving along that vertical line. This is when the event was almost over. It's almost to the bottom of the sun where it was going to move off. But the bottom would have actually been the the right hand side if you were just standing on the ground looking up at the sun. Another interesting thing when you look at that image, if you yeah. see all those big white areas on there, those were all gigantic storms, right? And so so the sun is very very active uh, during this particular time. It had lots of sunspot groups. Those sunspot groups are also in the plane of orbit. So so the plane of the orbit is really kind of up and down in this particular picture. The picture's kind of sideways. But you can see those sunspot groups in those big areas. Everywhere that you see on that image that's white is hot. Everywhere you see on the image that's dark is cool. So obviously Venus is a lot cooler than the rest of the surface of the sun. So, But the interesting thing is this. Those areas that are white are in the millions of degrees Celsius. The rest of the sun is somewhere around 6,000 degrees Celsius. So those were gigantic areas of what we call um, disturbance on the sun. They're big sunstorms. Uh, they're, they're gigantic areas where the sun, um, because of the twisting of its magnetic field, which occurs every 11 years, it gets very active on the surface, and it breaks out in spots. We know those as sunspots. And then sometimes those sunspots will erupt uh, in those giant 
white hot storms right there, and those are solar flares. So these are these are active regions on the sun which are actually emitting solar flares. Uh, they're shooting out material out into the solar system. So you can see some of those hot spots uh, and activity right there on those same images where we captured the transit of Venus back pretty, in 2012. Pretty nice, and it's amazing you can do that. You must have a huge density filter we talk on the on the camera sometimes about neutral density because yeah. we, we, we have to regulate and control the light coming into the camera lens right wow you have to have one for the sun do you not so so imagine a neutral density filter that blocked out all the wavelengths of light except one little gap and in that one little gap it lets it lets the light come through and when you choose that gap for a for a line for 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 a color of light that comes from a specific element, right? Then you can figure out what that element is doing on the sun. Those pictures, those red pictures, were hydrogen alpha pictures. We also okay. have some purple ones up there. Oh yeah, let's take a look at that. Hold on, yeah. I'll pull them up for us. There we go. So here we go. This is a very different looking shot. It's different in color, but it's but it's mm -hmm. different on purpose. So what we've done here is we've let a different color of light right there at the near ultraviolet, actually. Right, okay. Uh, you know, very, very purple part of the spectrum and, and into the near ultraviolet. Those are, um, those are calcium images. So the element calcium is actually in the atmosphere of the sun. And what we've done is we've let a little bit of light come through right at the wavelength where calcium likes to emit. Actually, there's a couple of wavelengths. Uh, calcium H and K lines, but mm -hmm. but everything else is as you mentioned the neutral density filter. We blocked out all the other Everything's all gone, the other yeah. colors of light except just those colors coming from calcium, and that's responsible for those little purple dots in the white where all the, all that high temperature is. Yeah, there. again the the white areas here are hot, the the darker areas are cool. But now we're seeing what calcium gas is doing as compared to hydrogen gas, which is what the other image. So so right. on the sun we can we can take the temperature of different flavors of gas so to speak and that helps mm -hmm. us get an idea of the structure of the sun that that, wow. that tells us you know what's happening at different atmospheric layers at different altitudes above the surface of the sun